Our story begins in the year 1906, in a very poor rural area next to Mount Fuji called Tenryu Shizuka. In this village, a boy is born, and he's named Soichiro Honda. Soichiro's father was Gie Honda. He was a blacksmith, and he would fix bicycles on the side. Soichiro's mother was not unemployed either. To help the family, she would weave. Soichiro's situation and village was so brutal that five of his siblings were killed because of different diseases before they were raised. Soichiro grows older and he reaches 8 years old and that's when he's hanging around in the village and he sees a very loud noise approaching him and what he saw was a chariot that was moving without a horse. He had just seen a Ford Model T. Soichiro couldn't believe his eyes because it was his first time that he's seen a car. Honda has always told throughout his life that he loved bicycles as a child. And when I saw a chariot or a car moving without the power of a human or an animal, I was shocked. By seeing this car, Soichiro fell in love with cars. A lightning had sparked inside him that he wanted to figure everything out about a car and how it works. Soichiro leaves school at a very young age and decides to work for his dad in the bicycle shop. And all he was asking his father was for a little bit of money to buy books and magazines to read about cars and piston engines. Even though Soichiro had left school, he would read these books and magazines all day. In 1922, when Honda is 16 years old, he buys a newspaper and there is an ad that a mechanic shop is opening in the city of Tokyo, a mechanic named Art Shokai. After reading this, Soichiro immediately goes to his father and tells him, I want to go to Tokyo and maybe get a job at this mechanic. His father told him, why should you go all the way there? Write them a letter and tell them your situation. Maybe they'll accept you this way. He listens and writes a letter to Art Shokai. When the owner of the mechanic shop realized who he's dealing with, he decided it's not a bad choice to hire this guy, and that is why he returned his positive message. Until this, Soichiro had lived in his village, and he had never seen the city before. When he entered Tokyo, he felt like he entered a different world, and you could say he really liked the environment. When he reaches Art Shokai, the new mechanic shop, he introduces himself, and he finally meets the owner. Yuzo Sakakibara, and he had his job set up for him. So what was his job? Babysitting his child for him. After hearing this, Soichiro feels devastated. He always wanted to learn how to be a mechanic, but now he's babysitting, and he gets very little money that he can spend on food and shelter. Soichiro wanted to go back to his home, but he was so embarrassed that his parents would be disappointed that he would keep it to himself. And since he didn't want to be defeated, he stayed and dealt with it. Eventually, Soichiro was patient and Sakakibara realized that he's running out of employees and the car market is booming. That is why he told young Honda to start working on cars. After a few days of Soichiro working, Sakakibara is shocked on how good this kid works. Not only does he love what he do, He's always interested in learning new things. And that is why he turned into one of his favorite employees and started not only teaching him about mechanics, but the business side as well. In Art Shokai, not only did they repair cars, they also repaired motorcycles and bicycles. And you have to know that at that time, Japan was not producing their cars or motorcycles themselves. And anything they were working on was European and American. The opportunity Soichiro had was amazing because he was working on different cars from all over the world. From Germany, American, British, and everything else. And of course, he was repairing different motorcycles as well. When Soichiro is 17 years old, Sakagibara calls him for a new project. And he tells Honda that he wants to create a race car. Because for the very first time, racing cars had been introduced to Japan. 
the group in Art Shokai developed this race car, which is made up of a few different cars. The chassis came from an American car called Mitchell, and the engine and transmission came from Daimler, and most of the fabrication and other parts were made in-house by the shop. It's good to know that the main technician working on this was Soichiro Honda. This car participated in the Japanese race and it actually became champion and you could say it was the best car made in Japan at that time. In the year 1926, the Japanese military called Soichiro for service and he was forced to introduce himself to the military. But in the physical exam, they realized that Soichiro Honda was colorblind and that is why he was let go. Soichiro gets so excited that he runs and rushes back to his mechanic shop and his excitement was that he didn't have to go to the military and he can continue being a mechanic. Two years later in the year 1928, Sakakibara opened up another franchise for his art shokai mechanic shop in the city of Hamamatsu. He calls his best mechanic and it was none other than Honda and he tells him you're the one in charge of this brand. Soichiro works so well in this shop that he attracts every person with a car in that area. And in the beginning, he was a solo mechanic, but at the end of the two year mark, he had 30 mechanics working in the shop with him. Not only was Soichiro Honda a famous mechanic in that area, but he was very famous in driving race cars as well. He was the first Japanese person to take a race car all the way to 120 kilometers an hour, a record that wasn't broken for the next 20 years. In the year 1936, Soichiro Honda was involved in a terrible car accident while he was racing and in this crash, he nearly dies. On the left side of his body, he had a few broken bones and he was forced to stay in the hospital for two months. And after he was healed and well again, he decided to go back to racing, something that his parents really hated. But eventually, when he hears that his wife and entire family is against the idea, he decides to quit. You have to know that race car drivers feel an adrenaline that's like no other and it's extremely addictive and you can't stay away from it. And that's what happens when Soichiro Honda lets go of racing. He gets extremely bored and wants to fill the void once again because there's something missing. Since he was a very good mechanic and he knew every car part, he decides to get another shop and develop piston rings, something that was very in high demand at that time. In the mornings, he would work for the mechanic shop and fix cars, and at night, he was always trying to develop new ways of making piston rings, and he wanted to create an alloy that's perfect for piston rings, something that's very difficult for back then. He continues this all the way to 1939, and after that, he decides to resign from his mechanic shop at the Art Shokai to fully pursue his dream of creating pistons and piston rings. By the year 1940, Soichiro had invented different types of pistons and rings. And it's interesting to know, Toyota was one of the first customers to buy Honda's pistons. But after a while, Toyota returns the pistons and rings and tells them that the quality of the product is not good. What Toyota did to Honda is give him a shock and give him a reality check. And he realizes that if he wants to be the top dog, he has to do things properly. And he decides to research different types of metals and how pistons are designed. He stopped working at the factory and only researched different types of metals. Any book or article that was written about metals, he would read about it. And when we get to the middle of the 1940s, Soichiro has created pistons that are out of this world and everybody wants to order them. In the first year he designed these pistons, he got so many orders that he had to hire 2,000 new employees to produce them. But in a very short period of time, World War II had ended and Japan is defeated. And after this war, nobody is thinking about pistons, rings, or any other thing. They just want a piece of bread so they don't starve to death. The worst thing is Soichiro had just gone up to the top, but after the war, things had gotten so bad that he didn't even have money for gas to put in his car. One day when he was riding his bicycle around the city, all of a sudden he's confronted with an old generator that was used in the war and it was all broken in pieces. When he sees this tiny engine for the very first time, he thinks 
about putting this engine on his bicycle and create a mini bike. And that would make my life easier because I would have a tiny motorcycle. Just this idea of seeing this generator and his bicycle gave him the idea to produce motorcycles. He had worked on American and European bikes all throughout his year and he was very familiar on how they are built. There were cars in Japan but nobody had the money to pay for it. And at this time motorcycles were worth more but very rare. So Honda decided to create motorcycles that use little fuel and is much faster than a bicycle. He started designing a motorcycle that's very small, very practical, and most importantly, very efficient. People really like his engine, and eventually, in the year 1947, Honda creates his first motorcycle that actually had the Honda name stamped on it. The Honda Type A. This is considered the first Honda vehicle ever made, and it's basically a bicycle with an engine on it. After one year, by the year 1948, Honda had made a lot of sales with his new bike. He starts a new company, the Honda Motor Company, a company that was only meant to create motorcycles. By the year 1949, Honda designs his new motorcycle and releases to the public, the Honda Model D. This motorcycle was considered a failure, but Honda wasn't a person to give up that easy. He thought to himself, and he said, I will redesign it. and release a new one. And eventually, by the year 1952, he had designed the Honda Super Cub. Super Cub explodes in Japan, and it really shows how well this bike is designed because everybody loves it. This bike makes him so famous that he's invited to the emperor's house and he's given the emperor's award. After this situation, a businessman in Japan decides to invest in the Honda Motor Company. He was none other than Takio Fujisawa. And when Soichiro realized who this is, he gets really happy that someone like him is investing. By the year 1958, US had decided to let Honda release the Super Cub to the American public. And the Super Cub was offered for only $295 to the US market. And that was very cheap because any other American motorcycle was quadrupled the price. The Super Cup gets extremely popular in America as well. And along with it, the Honda name gets famous. Just like we said, Soichiro always loved racing. And after this success, he started his own motorcycle racing team. But this time, he wasn't riding. At this time, Honda has no free time. Most of his time is spent in the factory in creating new designs. And in his free time, he's buying different brands' motorcycles to see how they're built and what kind of tech is used in those. At this time that Honda is doing this, the most famous bikes are Triumphs and Harley Davidson. And Honda always wanted to learn from these manufacturers to see what he can make better. It was because of this that when you get to the 1960s, Honda is the number one motorcycle brand in the world. When Soichiro becomes the biggest motorcycle manufacturer in the world, in his next speech, he announces, I would love to create a car company. Motorcycles were my second goal. And after this speech, he decides to design new cars. At that time, Toyota and Nissan were very popular in the world, not only Japan, and they were sold everywhere. And a lot of pessimists were telling Honda that you can't beat them. And if you try to compete with these two, they will lead you to bankruptcy. But Soichiro wasn't gonna let people bring him down. When you dedicate your life to something, you're gonna go there till it's finished. In the year 1963, Soichiro releases his first car, which was a mini truck called the Honda T360. This truck wasn't popular. But just like we said, Soichiro is only learning and he's not gonna give up. And he decides to create a sports car and he releases the S500. Only 1300 of these were made. And even though they were amazing cars, but not a lot of people bought them, Honda decides another route. He decides to design a new race car and participate in Formula One. And one year later, this came out, the Honda RA271. 
Soichiro was so familiar with racing and race cars that he became champion with the first Formula 1 car he designed in the 1964 Belgian Grand Prix. When this is all happening, Honda is designing another regular car and they're creating a sedan that's gonna be one of the most famous cars in the world. And eventually, by the year 1972, one of the most successful cars in the world is released by Honda. Honda Civic one of the reasons Civic was successful is that the 1973 oil crisis was going on. This is the year when the Arabs were sanctioning the West of oil because of Israel. And in the world market, oil was extremely expensive. And that is why the Honda Civic, when it's released, it's extremely popular. By the year 1973, a new CEO replaces Soichiro Honda. Soichiro was 67 years old and Honda had gotten so massive that it needed new leaders and a new group working on it. At the age of 85, on the 5th of August 1991, Soichiro Honda passes away and he leaves the Honda company behind. In our video about the history of Mercedes-Benz, some of you commented, who owns this company now? Just different shareholders. Honda is the same thing. When these companies get this massive, their stocks is formed into different share and sold to the public. But there's always a chance that a quite hefty amount like 20% is owned by one family. 